The caddisfly is a soft, moth-like creature with wings held over its back like a pup tent. The adult is a strong flyer but seldom strays far from water. Like the butterfly and other insects who undergo complete metamorphosis, the immature caddis is a soft-bodied larva rather than a hard-shelled nymph. The most primitive caddis larvae roam the riverbed hunting for food and are very exposed to predators such as trout. Slightly more evolved caddis fly larvae build silk-lined retreats, and several species even construct nets to sain items from the current. As drifting chunks of gravel and other garbage frequently wreck the nets, the caddis finds itself with a never-ending task of repair. When the seine traps edible debris, the caddis pluck the items from the nets or simply eats the entire net along with the paraphyton that has grown on the web. Caddis fly larvae are not above stealing and are frequently found plundering neighboring nets. The more advanced caddis species construct sheltering cases from sand, gravel, and other materials. One of the most primitive case builders, the Glossosoma, builds a dome of gravel over itself and with the aid of a silken cummerbund, slowly prowls the riverbed in search of algae. The gravel shelter was an important step in the evolution of caddis flies. However, the dome doesn't accommodate the larva's growth and the larva must frequently expose itself to the elements as it builds a new home. The gravel case, nearly weightless in the aquatic realm, becomes a lethal burden when water levels are quickly lowered. The larva can only carry the case a few millimeters before succumbing to exhaustion. Hydroelectric regimes and recreational pulse flows are major threats to Colossosoma's existence. As the caddis evolved, they developed tube-shaped shelters which could simply be elongated as the larva matured. The tubular configuration was an evolutionary success and the vast majority of today's caddis flies incorporate the design. Caddis and swift currents use large bits of gravel to hold themselves to the riverbed and some species affix extra large chunks at either side of the case opening to act as a ballast. In moderate currents, caddis tend to build homes with sand and in gentle currents out of sticks and pine needles. calm spring creeks and lakes where ballast is of no concern, caddis cases will be constructed of lightweight leaves and grass. Many of these larvae have the ability to release air into their case and float to the surface where they get dispersed by wind and waves. Most of the time, however, gravity gets the better of them. Many caddis species move about their environment by lowering themselves down current on tethered silk strands. They dangle in the richest flow from where they capture food items or simply repel from point to point as they investigate the neighborhood. One of the most unique caddis larvae are the leptocerids. Many in this family build ultra-lightweight cases by affixing only the smallest scraps of algae and vegetation to themselves. Freed from unnecessary weight, but nearly invisible to passing trout, the larvae quietly swim about in search of freshwater sponges upon which they feed. The caddis larvae seal themselves inside their cases and undergo metamorphosis very similar to the cocoon stage of a moth. Unlike the moth pupa, which hatches directly into a winged adult, the caddis pupa emerges from its metamorphosis in a transitional stage called the ferrate pupa. The ferrate pupa is extremely active and in most cases are very strong swimmers. Many ferret pupa produce gas beneath the cuticle which probably helps buoy them to the surface as well as separate their pupal skin from the adult caddis within. These gas-filled pupa glisten like jewels as they ascend the water column. Most caddis depend solely on their powerful swimming ability to reach the surface. They break through the water's film, the cuticle splits, and the adult caddis emerges.
For obvious reasons, this caddisfly is known as the traveling sedge. Just what evolutionary drive created this suicidal behavior is anyone's guess. Some caddisflies forego the perils and uncertainty of open water emergence and instead crawl onto land. This pupa has just emerged from its case and is hyperventilating by pumping oxygen through its gills prior to leaving the water. The famous October caddis is one of the best known terrestrial emergers. Evening swarms of adult caddisflies are a common sight along our rivers and streams. Caddis may swarm for days on end before settling down with a chosen mate. Some caddisflies lay their eggs by dapping the water while in flight, while others oviposit in the splash zones and allow ripples and waves to pull the eggs under. For trout and trout fishermen, the most exciting caddisflies are those who return underwater to lay their eggs. These terrestrial insects coat themselves with a glistening layer of air from which they breathe. They make easy to see and hard to resist targets for hungry fish. Once ovipositing is completed, the adult caddis returns to the surface to die. 